Hello everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I welcome I welcome you all to this uh, webinar or Q&A session on social media analytics. There is a small uh, situation uh, that we have here. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Anshul is not able to join the webinar today. However, uh, there are a few more folks from ThoughtBuzz who are uh, who have come over. So at the last moment, Anshul had a, a family emergency that he had to attend to. But uh, thankfully, he arranged uh, for his substitutes. And uh, while Anshul is not around, we actually have two people uh, from uh, ThoughtBuzz who are going to be part of this Q&A session. Uh, one of them is Samrat. He is already uh, there on the session. He is there in the call. and. Uh, the other person, Shamir, is going to join us uh, in a while. So, because uh, you know this thing happened at the last moment, just like uh, about half an hour back, uh, Anshul had to uh, rush to the hospital. Uh, while we are continuing with the webinar, there is going to be a little bit of extempore today, and uh, uh, yeah, basically whatever preparation was done uh, uh, has been uh, with Anshul. So, there is going to be um, uh, what you say. I mean, uh, there may be some hiccups as we uh, get through uh, this session. But I'm sure overall, uh, we'll have a, a, a good thing going here. And uh, hopefully, all of you will be able to walk out with uh, new insights on social media analytics today. So uh, so let me first, uh, 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 you know, Samrat is already here, and Shamir is joining in still. But uh, I'll just uh, hand over the session to Samrat for a while, and uh, maybe you know he can uh, introduce himself and what ThoughtBuzz does uh, in two minutes, and then we'll uh, you know jump off to the questions that people have asked. So Samrat, yeah, hi Manas, thanks. Hi everyone, and uh, again once uh, once again apologies for this last minute uh, change in uh, schedule. Um, like uh, Manas said, Anshul had to rush to the hospital, but uh, the idea is that uh, yes, we should be able to answer most of your questions uh, besides the PPT. And actually, I am very glad we don't have a PPT because I believe in more in extempo, more in interactive session rather than having a structured PPT. Uh, the, so the, to kick off the session, uh, I'll just yeah, I'll give you a backdrop about uh, what ThoughtBuzz does. ThoughtBuzz is a uh, pure play research and a business digital research and a business intelligence organization. Uh, we have two core competencies. One, of course, we have a dashboard, which is a social media monitoring dashboard. It's 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 like it competes with the let's say a like of a Radiant Six or a um, uh, you know or a WebFluence or a Simplified Three Sixty or a Systemos. But at the same time, what we also do is that uh, we have a customized business intelligence and an analytics center also, which actually offers cust uh, reports which are as per the customized expectations of the clients. Uh, and, and as we get along uh, uh, with the con uh, conversation, you'll understand what exactly I mean with the customized perspective. But to give you an overview, you know, for a lot of us at this point of time, social media monitoring would mean trying to understand what uh, the audience is talking about you. But because of the, but what we offer as part of our uh, customized uh, analytics and intelligence is that we actually try and take forward the perspective of what this data can further do for you. So which means that it could look at, again, influencer identification is something which I'm sure some of us would have done. But more importantly, you could also look at campaign feedback. It can be pre-campaign or a post-campaign. You could look at um, product feedback. You could look at competition mapping and business intelligence. You could look at industry intelligence, and etc. So uh, that's what uh, ThoughtBus is all about. Uh, we have been in existence for close to three and a half years. And uh, our major focus has been APAC, including India. So, so we have offices. Uh, we are headquartered out of Singapore. Then we have a fairly large team of, I would say, 10 people in, in India. Then we have presence in Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia as well. So, so that's briefly about ThoughtBus. Now, um, um, I would be happy to take any questions to begin with, because, like I said, we don't have a, a structured PPT in place for you to have to offer at this point of time. 
So uh, please go ahead and feel free to ask me any question. So yeah, so basically, uh, let me explain the format a little bit. So one thing is, uh, yeah, uh, Samrat, your screen is uh, on la on air right now. So you may want to be mindful okay. of that. <laughs> okay, yeah. and uh, yeah. So so the format uh, of the session is going to be that uh, I'll ask a lot of questions, and uh, I am going to ask uh, the questions primarily uh, from the ones that have been posed on the website as of now already, and uh, I'll also pick up the questions that are raised here uh, in the uh, Q and A box. So uh, we'll. I'm. I'm not sure. Uh, you know how many, uh, how much, uh, how many questions the time will allow us, but we'll try to maximize our uh, uh, time with these guys. Uh, so it's going to be primarily the Q and A, uh, Q and A based uh, session where I'm going to ask the questions. So, uh, Anshul, there are. Uh, sorry, not sorry, Samrat. So, uh, Samrat, there are uh, quite a few uh, uh, people who have uh, posed. Uh, 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 you know similar uh, questions uh, on the website uh, and uh, from that the sense that i get you know i've kind of tried to break up uh, the session in a f in some outline and uh, you know i would like to start with the questions related to the social uh, media analytics landscape you know by that what i mean is uh, what is meant by social media analytics what all is uh, you know what kind of data are we talking about here and how do you capture the data and sure. what is what is that data used for you know okay, fair enough um so i'll uh, uh answer this question step by step and i'll break it up into three or four questions because that's how you know it is uh when we when we talk about social media analytics we only don't mean facebook and twitter you know if you look at uh for a lot of brands in India and even uh, in uh, other countries in Asia, the social media initiators somehow tend to be more focused on Facebook, okay? Because there they have been able to get some results out of their initiatives by doing inorganic activities, which means advertising. Uh, and and uh, so that's uh, and marketing understands advertising very well. Therefore, Facebook tends to play a very important role. So you will have brands who are doing exceptionally well on Facebook, but they don't have a Twitter strategy. Even if they have something around Twitter, probably they will not be looking at a third platform. Or even if they or they don't have a structured content there. So you know, you will not be looking at a YouTube, you will not be looking at a Pinterest. So there are tons of forums where discussions happen, especially if you are a product-based company or a service-based company. Okay, and same may be true for a B2B environment. So when we talk about social media analytics, we take a 360 degree perspective, which means that yes, Facebook and Twitter is part of it, but we also try and see if people are posting comments about your product or service in a forum, what kind of comments are there? Uh, if there is a video which is being posted online, which kind of, you know, thrashes your product, fine, the video is there, but what are the comments which are part of those videos? Um, they, they, in, in similarly in the discussion forums, it's not about it's not about uh, the pair the the primary question, but how the discussion is also unfolding. So social media analytics needs to look at the entire gamut of online environment and user generated content, irrespective of which platform it is on. So that's very important. So if somebody says social media analytics, even if you let's say are doing great work on Facebook, but we urge clients, and, and in fact, I would also urge you to actually try and spend some time on these forums or any other platform, and maybe just do a random search around your keywords of a brand, of a product, of a service, and try and see what people are speaking about. It will give you a good indication in terms of you know where, what is, what where does your brand stand online from a user sentiment perspective. So, so that's what social media analytics is for us. Uh, so just to interrupt you uh, here, just okay. one, you know, just to interrupt you, interrupt you here. So are you saying that social media analytics is about uh, uh, you know gathering data about the conversations that are happening around your brand in the in the social media space, 
and uh, uh, creating some kind of dashboard around it which uh, surfaces these conversations and maybe you know uh, if the advo- dashboard is kind of advanced then it will also have the functionality of uh, marking the conversations as positive as negative or it they, it will also show you kind of the general direction that the conversations are taking is that what social yeah. media analytics field is yeah so 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 that's the second part of the question i was about to answer So I was just giving a backdrop in terms of what social media analytics should be and what it means for us and for a lot of industry players. Uh-huh. Now the second question, the answer is to the second answer is to your question that what does it entail? So when you say that, listen, I am spending money on social media analytics, or I would want to utilize a service like social media analytics. Yes, that's exactly what Manas said. That social media analytics uh, requires a dashboard to begin with. So you know, like I said, ThoughtBuzz has a dashboard. There are other players in the industry also who offer dashboards. Now, each dashboard would have its own USP, but primarily, most of the dashboard look at three or four, or maybe slightly more components, which are one, uh, sentiment tagging. They you know, the dashboards try and tries and tags whether the sentiment is positive, negative, or neutral. Some dashboards also give you in terms of a bus trend analysis, which means that let's say over a period of one week. what what is the break up of the buzz uh, you know has it peaked has it fallen is it in line with the campaign maybe you have launched so on and so forth um it also talks about if you can track the ip it, uh, the analytics uh, sorry the dashboard will give you the geographies also it will give you which are the prominent platforms in which the conversations are happening now of course any information which i am talking about uh, the assumption is that's it in the public domain you know uh, if you are Twitter ID is protected. We can't capture that information. If your Facebook profile is protected, we can't capture that information. So, so when I talk about social media analytics, the underlying assumption is that any information which is available in the public domain and can be accessed by crawlers. Uh, then, social media analytics, like I said, would look at word clouds. You know, so what are what are the uh, let's say around a particular keyword? What are the associated discussions which are happening? Okay. uh then social media analytics would also talk about who are the people who are regularly talking about a brand or product so you know you know so 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 uh some dashboards actually offer the ability for you to see who are the people who are talking about your brand on an x platform maybe also across platforms okay so so that's the second part of the question in terms of what social media analytics how it works operationally the third part of social media analytics is what can it do for you which is very critical now when social media analytics began it was prima- it, the focus was more in terms of trying to understand what the online organization or the online audience is generally talking about your you your brand your product or service now however because as the quantum of data is increasing and what we see is that there are a lot of integrated campaigns happening the nature of user generated content has also changed which means earlier if i was only talking about a brand you know maybe complaining about something today i'm talking about the campaign i am talking about the individuals from a company i am uh, maybe participating in an uh, in, a, in a campaign now if you or or if you are if it's a public listed company and i'm happy unhappy with the performance of that public listed company i may be looking at that there is a custom service angle to it which means that if you just look at the nature of information it has started to impact various verticals in an organization so like i said if it's a campaign specific information if it's an int- or or you know if it's about product it will somewhere impact the marketing and communication if it's about the your complaint it's impacting your customer service if it's about financial information your cfo or your financial division needs to be very concerned um uh, if there is if there is a fraud which has been spoken about online you know somebody in the internal uh, forensic uh, department would be very keen to know it so so as as you look at this information you will realize that it can be put to multiple uses you know it's not only about using this information for various marketing and communication uh, initiatives but maybe look at using this information uh in a way where 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 we probably we can say that it is impacting the entire business in a social way so 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 that's 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 those are the multiple uses the entire uh, social media analytics can be put across and 
if you the you should try and correlate it to the way offline research and analysis work. You know, when we mean you know, if, if if anybody has been part of any initiative where people are where you know your company or your clients have captured information in the offline environment, you realize that again it is put to multiple use. The same thing is actually starting to happen in the online environment. Like I said, the volume of conversations have increased, the nature of conversation has increased, the quality of conversation has also improved. Thus, this is allowing organization, brand, agencies to start using this data for multiple purposes. So, Samrat, uh, uh, do you have some kind of sample dashboards uh, with you that people, you know, that you could uh, show to people? And uh, that will uh, make it much more real. Uh, you know, while we have been uh, hearing a lot uh, about these analytics and the way uh, they can help you monitor what, what is being talked about your brand. But, you know, the uh, as they say, the proof of the pudding is in eating. Uh, do you have some kind of uh, screenshots that you could walk us through? Yes. If you can uh, just give me a sec, I'll just have to move between presentations. So I'll stop sharing the screen. Sure. Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. So guys, as I said, uh, I mean, it was the original session was uh, meant to be with Anshul. And uh, while he had uh, done the preparation, uh, uh, we are working with uh, Samrat and Shamir. And uh, they have been kind enough to join at the last moment. Uh, so I'm really thankful to them. Uh, but yeah, I mean, we just have to put up with a few of these uh, inconveniences uh, uh, during the uh, session today. So there are a few people who are also posting questions here uh, in the question section. Uh, once we are done with the basic stuff, uh, then I'll uh, also start taking up the questions uh, from uh, this section. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some uh, snapshots from our own dashboard. Manas, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, uh, are you still the presenter? I'm not, uh, we don't see your screen. Okay. Yeah, I'll just start sharing with you now. Okay, sure. Okay. So, so uh, the dashboard which you'll see actually has dual functionality. This is a uh, new product which we are working on. So, uh, it's still in beta where we have integrated certain CRM capabilities in our dashboard to actually look at the uh, the entire social CRM space because increasingly what we have seen is that uh, clients are managing customer service online and uh, because it requires two aspects one is obviously the monitoring and engagement but the second aspect is workflow management which means that as increasingly uh, the number of online requests increase therefore the team size has been increasing and in most of the cases what happens is that they end up working on Excel sheets etc. So this is just a snapshot which I'm showing you. So actually I'll just skip this and I'll actually come back to. So like I was saying, uh, in a workflow capability, dashboard is able to raise some tickets, which means if, if there is a particular con conversation which is happening and which is tagged around your brand or product, you know, and you have realized that it needs to be addressed, the dashboard allows you to actually say that find this particular conversation needs to be answered by an XYZ person. So if you can look at the screen, there is obviously the ticket ID, the subject line, priority, status which is open, assigned by to the person who's picked up the conversation and assigned to who's the person and what is the due date. Uh, in terms of you know the team members who are part of the workflow process that can also be integrated. So I'll skip and I'll actually come to the which is more, more mainstream in terms of uh, what most what you will see in most of the dashboards. So if you if you actually do a search on a keyword and uh, you you use our dashboard, what you'll see is that what is the article type or you know on which platform the maximum conversation is happening. So when I say when if you look at this particular screen, microblog obviously represents Twitter in this case. So you know for keywords which I'm not sure which is the one we've used in the screenshot but 
it's a clear indication that Twitter is the platform where most of the conversation is happening. Now, if I was a brand which was looking at uh, trying to strategize my entire social media offering and trying to understand what are the platforms which I'll be relevant, I'll actually be very interested in seeing the slide. What I'll do is I will create a universe of my keywords, okay, which may be pertaining to whatever that you are into, and I will actually do a dipstick of conversations for let's say last three months to six months and I look at which are the key platforms where the conversation is happening. Uh, in a lot of cases what we see is that may not be happening we blindly assume that Facebook is the preferred social networking or social media platform in India and to some extent that assumption is true but the reality is that in certain cases it may do well so in a B2C environment Facebook uh, tends to do well but in a B2B environment it is not true. In fact globally if you see in a B2B environment Facebook hasn't done well barring couple of companies only who have actually very strong content strategy for Facebook where they've been able to pull it off. So a slide like or, or information like this will make a lot of sense if I'm a brand if I want to launch a brand to, uh, or rather if I want to launch a social media strategy I'll say okay fine because most of the conversations that are happening on Twitter, I need to look at a Twitter strategy. Okay, and then of course you have the breakup of the conversations. Why I would want so for, at the next step, what I'll do is I will say, okay, I have conversations on Twitter. What is the nature of these conversations on Twitter? And then I will say, fine. If my nature of conversation is more about my my campaign, which has got launched recently, then which means that people are talking about my campaign online, and I need to engage them, engage them. On the contrary, if the information is more about the fact that people are slamming my product because they're not happy with the service, then it's it's a case for me to go back to my customer service team and tell them, listen, you know, we need to somehow integrate our online resolution on Twitter as part of it. So that is one way to look at it. Then comes the news part, which actually a lot of people in India haven't looked at it, and, and unfortunately a lot of PR agencies haven't also looked at it. Uh, if anybody is from the PR background, you would be very well versed with media management, okay? Which means that I need to manage certain key individuals in media. People who have great following, people who write stuff makes a difference to how your brand is perceived. And similarly, the way you have individuals, you have certain media houses who might be writing more about you and there are certain media houses who might be writing less about you. And they might be doing similar things for your competition also. So when I look at the news piece, I say, okay, there are these 10 primary media houses or media publications which are very, very, very relevant to my industry and trade. Now, out of I, I realize suddenly out of these two, we have a great relationship with them. Out of these 10, only the, I see that two of these online port, uh, platforms are not talking much about us, but they are talking much about a competition. And, and, and like I said, you may have a great relationship with them. Now, if I was a PR guy, suddenly it will actually be on my radar. That why? You know, everything seems to be hunky-dory. In the, in the offline print version, things seem to be written about us. But in the online version, somehow we tend to be losing to a competition. And please note that whatever goes online does not go offline. Because offline you have limited space. Online you don't have any media the space constraints. So you know you will see a lot of these small snippets being carried online but not getting mentioned offline. So from a PR perspective, I'm very interested in knowing what is being written about it. And therefore news comes into the picture. Uh, blogs. Now blogs tend to be slightly more detailed, which means the person needs to have thought through before he or she is writing. You know, it's not like a tweet where you have 140 character limit and you just write a thought, but in a blog you need to elaborate the thought, you need to talk about it. So I would look at this information and say, fine. I've got 62 mentions. Let's try and analyze what these mentions are. Is somebody just copy pasting a news item or something which somebody else has written? Or are these people who have actually taken the pain of trying to share a perspective or a point of view about something which we have done? Now, if that this latter is true, it's a it's of great interest because then I know that these people are not just random people who are commenting, but these are people who have opinion about me, who have opinion about my brand or product. And if, if they are writing good things, yes, they might be actually the influencers we are looking for. But on the contrary, as I call them bad advocates, if they are people who are not writing well about me, 
then which means i need to start addressing their concerns slowly and slowly because if they have detailed opinion negative opinions about me it 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 impacts your online reputation as we call it so that's how a uh, you know a random search or a structured search will what that that's what it will allow you to do so uh, samrat so, uh, a quick question here uh, i mean uh, Uh, this is definitely useful information uh, but there are a few thoughts that are quickly running through my mind so one is sure. that uh, i mean uh, there are tools outside uh, you know for example on twitter i can do a twitter search uh, and on google i can go and uh, search for the blogs so uh, what is the reason you know that i would uh, prefer uh, using a specific tool for uh, listening rather than uh, you know just going with a with the generic tools is it that uh, you know this kind of thing makes it much more manageable because now against uh, each item that is there it's not something that is going to fall through the cracks and it's going to just uh, slip by rather than that everything is now kind of uh, uh, you know i've got it aggregated at one place and now i can assign tickets around it and i can start taking actions around it which are much more manageable is that the value of the tool here uh uh okay your choice of tool uh, is based on few parameters one of course is what is that you're looking at it you know you need to understand what are the business objective and can it do tool deliver those business objectives so let's say if your business objective or your rather it also depends on the bandwidth which you have okay so if you need if you have a bandwidth at the back end where there are people who can use this data to offer a final output which means that they manually tag the data they clean the data they can put a presentation together and which can be presented to let's say your senior management then maybe you would want to look at a tool which offers you more in terms of the raw data and not too much analysis okay but on the other hand if you're looking at a tool which gives you final analysis then you would want to look at something advanced the third component is the, the your uh, budgets you know so you have a tool which starts at maybe 100 dollars okay and which starts at 500 dollars our radian 6 sysmos etc that these are the two prominent tools which are on the higher end of the bandwidth where you know if you have a large universe of keywords your monthly spend on these tends to be higher you know so let's say you compare cost of radian 6 versus the cost of thought buzz at a basic level the cost tends to be there's a difference of anything between i think are probably 400 dollars to begin with yeah but actually more than but, the cost but, uh, sorry sorry i was interrupting you here but sure, what you please yeah yeah um my question was that more than the cost you know it's not about the cost it's a first of all whether as a business you know when is it that i need it you know every tool has a place and every tool has a you know has a certain audience that it can satisfy very well and uh, if you see here among the 70 70 people who are there on the webinar uh, different uh, people will be in the different stages you know they will be in different their businesses will be in different stages and their needs will be different so uh, what i'm trying to get to is that when is it that a simple tweet deck search is sufficient when is it that you want to move up and want to have more analysis of uh, uh, of your uh, of these conversations when is it that you want to make this entire analysis more actionable uh in the sense that you want to start assigning tickets and uh, use it more as a crm so you know i'm just trying to understand uh, and maybe if you can take and take a few examples uh, uh, example companies and then uh, talk in their context you know when is it that they moved uh, graduated from one stage to another stage uh, in this space okay so uh, it's a interesting and a good question but slightly difficult to answer uh, it actually depends at what stage of your social media implementation you are at frankly speaking if if you are at a stage where you are still uh, exploring whether you should get on the social media then maybe a tweet deck is a very simple way to start it but i think i think today we uh, have 
cross that stage where a simple tweet deck will help you. Because now getting onto social media is not a question of if, it's, it's a question of when, okay, and how ready we are. Now, if that's where you are, you would eventually be on the environment, okay? So you need to start understanding what the environment is talking about you and what the environment is all about, which means that a tweet deck today is just purely gives you a search or monitoring around a particular keyword. It doesn't give you any form of analytics until and unless you manually sit and measure how many tweets came in a particular minute, in a particular hour, in a particular day, in a particular week, so on and so forth. And you may say, fine, the volume is less, I may want to manually do it. But I think I think it has to be, it, it, it can't be sent uh, for any of the bigger brands. For any of the bigger brands, if you use TweetDeck and you hope to manually measure how many conversations are happening around your brand, and you know, then I would say seriously, you need to be really great at counting the flow of the conversations, but manually it is very difficult to do. So today, any 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 brand would need a basic level of analytics or a tool. Why? Because you may have these consumer or user-generated conversations around various platforms. So I'll give, I'll I'll not uh, name the client because of uh, non-disclosure aspects, but I'll give you an example of this telecom client with whom uh, I have been working for almost two and a half to three years now. Uh, I clearly remember in 2009 when we started working with them, the mandate was very simple, just monitor conversations. Okay, social media was new, the organization didn't know what to do on social media, so the mandate was we just want to understand what is the overall sentiment and buzz around our brand, how do people perceive our brands. And uh, at some point of time they had said start monitoring competition also. So for one full year, we continued to monitor on a daily basis, complaints, feedback on brands, how their pricing is vis-a-vis -vis competition, what are the freebies which competition is doing, how are your value-added services faring against competition. Now, after one year of information, they realized that what are the, key, you know, so uh, what are the, uh, you know, pain points for them in the business? Because obviously if you have a pain point in the business, then only you will go and complain about it. So, which was great. However, by 2010, you know, people in India has all, had also started talking, okay, Facebook, something needs to be done, Twitter, something needs to be done. So, the brand said, fine, we have been doing very basic level of analysis, now we need to start looking at advanced analysis. So, that's where we kind of came up with a specialized tool for them, okay, and we said, fine, we'll use a tool because the kind of analysis which you're looking at, the volume of data is too huge, and therefore, we need to move away from just using a tweet deck or I don't remember, I don't actually remember which tool we were using those days, but I think it was something very simple like this only. Okay, and in certain cases manual also because forums we had to manually, you know, search and track what is happening and then copy paste it. So if I so understand, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, please ask, Manus, go ahead. No, what I was saying, so if I understand correctly, uh, so one thing is that uh, one thing that stands out in this story is uh, definitely the volume. So if there is a volume of uh, data that is coming in, so in that case, uh, you will need a tool uh, to manage it, a uh, specific tool to manage it. The second is uh, uh, that I get from you is, uh, one is the flux of the volume. I mean, uh, how many tweets per day or per hour that are coming in. The second part is over what period you want to do some kind of listening and uh, collect the data so that uh, you are able to go back to some history and then uh, maybe uh, benchmark yourself against uh, what has they been there in the past so i understand that's also a distinct theme so basically if there is significant amount of volume in terms of flux or in terms of the time period over which you want to do the monitoring and uh, make sense out of the data then uh, i get that uh, it's uh, it's a better thing to do, go with a tool then you know just uh, or specialized tool rather than just going with a generic uh, search tool like TweetDeck. The second thing that I gather yes. from you is that uh, uh, if you want to make things more manageable uh, in the sense uh, uh, you know the analysis, the reports, the tracking, etc., then that then also it you know it creates the need for a specialized tool. And uh, 
so given given that i understand that the, for the big brands uh, it is it has become like a must and uh, they need to have some kind of social media analytics or uh, you know uh, some people uh, uh, are asking a few questions i'll just come back to uh, come back to that uh, but uh, so i understand that so uh, being a big brand creates that need that you need to have some kind of social media analytics and, um manas uh, this is yeah. shamir yeah shamir uh, just to add on um there is also another need for a specialized tool besides a social search uh, or even a search engine or a platform like tweetdeck now conversations are not limited to just facebook or twitter or a particular blog these conversations or you know the feedback from your customers can happen anywhere maybe on a niche blog that you may not be aware of so a tweetdeck you know only it gives you tweets and other uh, alerts will only give you from specific platforms whereas a specialized tool like this can scour the entire web and give you information that happens anywhere across the web so that's the other advantage so today we've seen startups as well starting to monitor conversations online to figure out what their customers are talking about them because they can't take that risk of you know listening to one platform whereas the customers may be on another platform so startups are also starting to use that uh, we've also seen interestingly uh, vcs and angels starting to monitor conversations online trying to figure out you know what's happening in this ecosystem uh, what are uh, the budding startups coming out of this region what are the hot spaces so it has really evolved from just listening to simple chatter to trying and understanding uh, what are the insights in a specific domain or a sector Mm-hmm. so uh, yeah i get your point i mean so one thing that you are saying is that uh, being comprehensive uh, uh, is one part of the specialized tools uh, which cannot which one cannot get from tweet deck and the other thing that i understand uh, from you is that it's not only always about your brand in general you want to make sense out of the industry you want to make sense out of the competition and uh, to be able to do that you need to uh, have a handle on the pulse of the people and uh, it's not necessary that you will search only for your brand you may be looking at the analytics uh, which can be related to your industry or the competition as well and uh, that's right yeah so got it so guys some of the questions that are being asked uh, about the format and uh, uh, stuff like that uh, here i'll just answer that once so one thing is uh, some of the some of the question that i'm seeing is um, you know uh, the, you know there are th- there is thoughtverse tool and there are other tools and so what is the difference in the tools so that is not the focus of the conversation here so thoughtverse is an example and these are the guys who are in the thick of things so they are here to talk about the social media analytics and uh, because they come from the background that's why they using that as an example but the point is not uh, you know what is how is thought was different from say social mention or radian 6 the point is how you guys can use social media analytics and uh, uh, you know uh, so that that's that's one thing so that's not our uh, you know focus uh, area that how is it different from other guys the second uh, uh, kind of type of questions uh, that i'm seeing is uh, you know uh, can you uh, Uh, you know uh, what are the slides in the presentations and there are not they don't seem to be too many slides over here so as i uh, mentioned in the beginning maybe for the guys who joined late so we were supposed to have this session with anshul uh, who is the ct of thoughtbus and uh, uh, because anshul couldn't make it uh, to the webinar because of his uh, uh, family emergency uh, 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 samrat and shamir uh, these are the two folks uh, pretty senior folks uh, from thoughtbus who have worked with a lot of customers and bring a lot of uh, experience they have uh, joined us uh, you know together and uh, so that we can uh, go through this conversation so uh, while anshul had prepared some of the material to share with you but unfortunately because he couldn't come so uh, uh, you know uh, uh, shamir and samir uh, sorry shamir and samrat are uh, sharing the material that they have ready with them but let's focus on the conversation and let's uh, you know focus on the questions that we have uh, around this uh, uh, domain 
so uh, uh, samrat can uh, and shamir uh, guys can we have some more examples you know people really love examples and can you know i, I understand that you cannot share the names of the companies that you have worked with or you are working with but can we have more examples of you know some person x company x or y you know they used uh, not necessarily your tool alone but in general how they use social media analytics and did something sure no we have examples to talk about ranging from automobile to uh, financial services to banking uh, fmb so you know okay so 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 you know uh, let me give you an example here now of a particular automobile client the automobile client was about to go through undergo some uh, rebranding as part of their overall marketing mandate now as what they were doing is that uh, they were not sure how the entire rebranding would be take uh, would be you know accepted by the overall universe of audience be it the consumers industry and other people who follow the brand so it was a classic case where maybe it, so i i look at it as a uh, post campaign measurability or feedback now so as part of the integrated campaign they said fine um, since we will do a mainstream uh, market research to understand how people are perceiving the new brand we should also do it online which was great so that 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 was the easy part we said that's easy because uh, you know we've done a campaign we we need just need to monitor the buzz and we need to monitor what people are saying and if it's good which means people have accepted it well but then came the tricky part they said we want to correlate it to sales which was slightly different and difficult also so suddenly we had to start thinking i said okay so you know it suddenly changes the scope of work one so far you were only looking at measuring your brand and because you want to correlate it to sales you somewhere need to start looking at competition universe also and in uh, automobile you have various categories so if in a four wheeler you have a b c and d depending on how the car is positioned so we had to look at various categories secondly what we have to do we had to understand that what are the sales number for competition and is it correlating with the buzz which is online so suddenly from what it was a basic measurability activity because we had to correlate it to sales the entire scope change and actually it kind of pushed us also and it challenged us because frankly speaking at that point of time this was the first of its kind of project which we were doing but to cut, to cut the story short of course we went through the entire exercise we measured we identified people who were talking we identified the platforms etc okay but what came out of it was the fact that uh, we found actually perfect correlation between the online buzz and the sales figures and not only for the client we were working but for the industry also which was an probably an eye opener for okay it was an eye opener for client but it was an eye opener for us also because this was the first time we were doing a project like this now increasingly the client became convinced that maybe they so you know it helped the client in also saying that fine if there is a perfect correlation between the buzz online and my sales can i look at actually increasing my sales by spending some more money online so they were spending money on uh, traditional digital outlets advertising you know newsletters doing campaigns maybe to some extent mobile space also but they were not spending too much money on social media so they said fine let's do a pilot and let's try and do this again after 3 months after 3 months again the figures were extremely impressive so slowly client realized that as it had started to spend slightly more money on in the social media space the sales figure had also started to improve now i am i can very confidently tell you that in the automobile space we are probably one of the pioneers in terms of spending money in social media and 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 the last report which we did for them was i think uh, you know sometime in september end and fra- and every time barring barring two quarters every quarter we have actually been able to 
you know show them that the kind of money which they are spending the roi so to say discussion which keeps on happening most of the time that the money which you are spending in online space actually is able to translate into sales somewhere now in certain cases of course to be fair to the client also in certain cases they did stand alone social media campaigns but in uh, in a lot of cases they did integrated campaigns also which means that you had a huge offline spend and you had an online spend to integrate maybe the execution of the campaign was online you know so so that's one example which we shared and which worked brilliantly matlab it's it's actually one of the case studies which we openly talk about so if i uh, if i have to gather something from this case study i mean this is really interesting i would say because uh, you know majority of the time uh, uh, during our training sessions also um, and uh, even otherwise uh, people keep asking about the roi of social media investment and uh, so it, what i gather from here is that uh, you know social media analytics is also a way to find out the general roi that you are getting on your uh, social media initiatives Uh, is that correct absolutely uh, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely so, so somebody like i said towards the beginning sorry yeah let me just finish this point like i said towards the beginning of the conversation your social media is uh, can be can can work on multiple levels which means that i can use the data from or user generated data to maybe plan a campaign okay i can use that data post the campaign to understand what kind of buzz has been created what has been the acceptability of the campaign okay and uh, so uh, uh, we got two examples so far and both of them were pretty good examples uh, can we also have an example uh, you know uh, some small company or uh, vcs as uh, shamir was talking about either you samrat or shamir anybody wants to share an example of uh, you know some small guy uh, uh, doing some social media analytics and uh, Uh, driving some business results from that. Sure, Manas. And in fact, uh, there are startups in India now looking at uh, you know attracting customers. So customer acquisition is one of the challenges for any startup. And in fact, the entire business revolves around customers. So it's very crucial to understand what customers are talking about and what the needs are of the customer. Uh, probably feedback. And today, as you know. the social environment has evolved in such a state that people are sharing their experiences online mostly bad but also good experiences are being shared online so it's important for a, a new startup to also understand and you know digest the overall sentiment and tonality of these customers um so if if you look at uh, social commerce or e-commerce platforms uh who are also our clients we've been working with few online retail apparel uh clients as well we've been working with some uh healthcare clients which are startups so we've been consulting them and uh they've been so if you if you look at the case of a healthcare product uh, in the uh web domain they've been using monitoring as a platform uh to understand you know where these customers actually exist uh so we so they had two different uh modules they had the doctors and they had the patients so they wanted to understand where are these doctors currently engaging on social media was it facebook was it a specific blog which are those blogs so which regions and who are the patients talking about uh healthcare issues what sort of healthcare issues was it about um you know dermatology was it about radiology you know what what um you know specialization what um, medical specialization was the uh, where were they talking about so this was the exercise which the startup did for about 3 to 4 weeks trying to understand the domain better uh and then channeling their marketing efforts and marketing spend on those niche customers so now they don't have to you know try and fail and you know validate their marketing strategies again and again till they figure out what's right so they've saved themselves the time frame of actually doing that they've narrowed down on their right customer segments and they're able to channel the marketing efforts and make sure that it's effective so this is one way where startups are actually using monitoring to do uh you know more focused strategies in terms of acquiring customers uh if you look at a more evolved stage of a business let's say a startup which is at least 2 to 3 years down the line 
today they've, everyone's doing Facebook. So Facebook happens to be one of the more favorite channels, especially for the Indian companies, uh, where they're trying to create a community of their own and trying to engage themselves and you know provide special offers. So it's like Samrat has previously pointed out, you know, brands are actually using them to identify who are their influencers and who are their detractors and try and engage these influencers on a one-on-one -on -one basis and incentivize them. So these are the you know cases that I can provide as examples. Oh, cool. So what I gather from this is uh, uh, that by doing this, by using some social media analytics techniques, uh, startups are able to locate where their customers are present or uh, may not be just the customers actually any stakeholders so they may be able to identify the channels where their uh, stakeholders are present so that they can go and engage with them on those channels and they can also find out what kind of conversations that they are having over there so that they can uh, tune their conversations uh, you know in the same manner so that uh, they become more uh, visible uh, so uh, so from this i gather that uh, you know the startups uh, themselves uh, you know this is a good platform for the startups as well and probably here uh, being a comprehensive uh, you know something comprehensive and something which is able to go beyond uh, displaying just a stream of uh, incoming data uh, and you know uh, maybe analyze it and then create some more meaningful answers out of uh, those raw, uh, raw, raw tweets uh, that kind of tool will help here so uh, so uh, next uh, you know uh, we are running out of time somehow i thought one hour will be uh, a lot of time but um, you know uh, uh, there is one more thing that i wanted to cover and while i want to go into more examples but uh, you know i would like to go uh, into those examples in the context of implementation cycles. So before I move to the implementation cycle, I'm going to launch two polls on the webinar. Uh, people can access it from the webinar screen under the sections polls. So uh, so one poll is, uh, are you interested in uh, uh, any social media related courses or workshops? And uh, uh, the second one is, uh, uh, Okay, so I can run only one poll at a time. So uh, let's wait and uh, yeah. So once that poll is closed, uh, yeah. So I can close this poll now. So the other poll is: uh, Are you interested in talking to Thoughtbus uh, for your social media analytics uh, needs? So you guys can uh, choose uh, uh, if you want to talk to Thoughtbus. Somebody from there will contact you. If you don't want, then uh, you know, nobody will contact you from there. So, uh, yeah. So while the poll is in progress, uh, uh, Shamir and Samrat, the question that I had was uh, more around the implementation cycle. You know, people uh, create their uh, social media uh, uh, strategy, and uh, in their social media strategy, you know, one this was one of the question and uh, posted on the website that as part of their social media strategy, what is the, uh, uh, what you say, uh, how, how they bring in uh, analytics part of it, you know, because people budget for Facebook, people budget for Twitter, people budget for content, but how do people budget for it? And, uh, you know, where does it fit into it? And how, how long does it take for a company to get some results out of it? Uh, you know, so if you could elaborate on those, uh, maybe share your uh, uh, experiences around that. Uh, I would say that yeah, sure. analytics should be, you should have a budget of anything between 10 to 20, 10 to, 10 to 15%, 20% on the higher side as part of your analytics. The reason being that uh, this environment is very fast paced and changing and you have new users coming on board every day. Unlike a traditional environment where, you know, it's slightly more settled. It's obviously very dynamic, but compared to the entire social media and even digital, you know, one would say that this traditional is settled and digital is far more, uh, far more far, uh, fast paced. So anything between 10 to 20% of your annual budget should be in analytics. Uh, and why I'm saying such a high figure is because it's not because it's the cost of the tool. 
even if you use the best of the tools, you would realize that it requires, beyond the point, it requires manual intervention and inference. You know, getting data is one. Getting analytics is another. But using that data and analytics in taking business decisions is the third aspect which most of us tend to ignore while doing our budgeting and planning. So, so you need the right people who understand data and who understand business to actually say that fine, if we have a certain set of data in front of us, how do we use it for business purposes? So you have to have manpower cost also built into it. And therefore, you know, I, uh, I do believe very strongly believe that manual intervention and inference in analytics is very, very important. To answer the second question in terms of putting it together, uh, it is not a very long process. I think what you need to do is you need to identify what is that you want to measure. Once that is identified, you need to just maybe get an agency on board or get a dashboard. Okay. Uh, start with the universe of keywords which you want to start monitoring, and in a and depending on the amount of conversations or user generated buzz which is there, you could start getting first set of results maybe 15 days. In a case where the conversations are fairly large, maybe you could look at a month's time. So we do standalone projects for clients where they say we just want to understand, you know, what is happening around a brand and this is a one-off activity and do give a comeback with certain insights, etc. So typically in a 30-day window, we are able to give them an analysis for data from let's for which which tends to go back probably six months. Now, uh, the only challenge being that uh, it, this doesn't have too much of Twitter data because we don't have firehose for Twitter. And uh, as all of us know, Twitter doesn't allow us to do historic search beyond four or five days. So, uh, so if so, I understand correctly, a typical implementation cycle. So one thing that you are saying is that analytics should be part of the social media strategy because you cannot... Uh, uh, monitor uh, data or manage data manually beyond a threshold and ultimately you know uh, as uh, somebody had once pointed out to me when i was still in the early days of measuring things that there is uh, data is like money on the table uh, if you if you're not uh, serious about it you are losing the money on the table so i understand what you're saying that i you know i can relate to that part where you say that it should be part of the social media strategy and if I understand correctly, please correct me if wrong. If I'm wrong, just to rephrase you or just to reiterate you, you're saying the implementation cycle will mean uh, uh, first the you know you have to decide what is it that you want to measure. And uh, while there are a lot of questions I see uh, on the screen, uh, question set uh, that people are saying what is it that they should be measuring. Uh, uh, but I think that's where you know. Uh, uh, any analytics company will not be able to tell you what is it that you want to measure because uh, that's probably core to your business. So that's something that you have to decide uh, by yourself. What is it that you want to measure? But once you are oh, actually, able, actually, I can take yeah. a minute and answer that question also. Yeah, Just sure. Give you a sure. Okay. Uh, what you should be measuring? You should be measuring uh, how many people are po talking positive stuff for your product or brand. How many people are talking negative stuff? You should be measuring which are the uh, platforms on which conversations are happening. You should be measuring if you have launched a particular campaign, how is it peaking in the online environment or is it even peaking? You should be measuring who are the people talking about you. Okay. So that's, that's broad. Then you can come down to platform specific. So of course you have Facebook insights, etc. but there can be another matrix of 50 odd parameters which you can define which may be very simple. Who are the people who are repeatedly engage, engaging on your platform, on your Facebook page? What is the kind of media are they sharing? What kind of questions are they answering? If they, so is it a poll? Is it a multiple choice question? Is it as a static question? What kind of media gets maximum responses? Then on Twitter, you could very simple, you know, I'm sure we all had heard the Justin Bieber example where his thank you got something like 50,000 tweets. You know, one could measure that. How many retweets are you getting to a message? How engaging are you on Twitter? You know, uh, are people actually conversing with your brand or it tends to be more of a monologue rather than a dialogue? Okay. Uh, so, so, you know, anything and everything which you, which 
where you have a business decision, you can actually say the way I am measuring the offline impact of my business, of my business, I can, frankly speaking, you can actually measure the same thing online today. Yes, it, 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 it is that that integrated and evolved now. So what I, I mean, uh, uh, sorry to cut you off here. I mean, we are running out of time, so uh, we need to uh, move in the direction of summarizing. But one thing, you know, one point uh, I wanted to make uh, uh, here was that uh, there is, you know, so much that you can measure, I'm sure. Because, and especially this being a digital media, a lot of things become measurable. But the, the point is that uh, while every, you know, every while everything that can be measured should you be measuring that you know that becomes the question is that you know number of retweets is that key to your business uh, because for example the examples that uh, shamir was talking about wherein the vcs are using uh, social media to understand some trends so uh, you know those kinds of things aren't they very specialized uh, uh, if i have to put, put that question I mean, is it is is that going to come in some uh, packages? Manas, can you be slightly louder? So my question is, uh, so basically, ultimately, uh, there are uh, there is this data, and uh, you want uh, some questions to be answered through the data. So while uh, we can take a data-oriented view of the world, and we can say this is the data out there, and which you can measure. But ultimately, doesn't it boil down to the questions or the business questions that you have in your mind and then uh, look at the data from that point of view? For example, the one of the examples that was uh, shared here by you guys was around uh, the healthcare company, uh, which wanted to know where the doctors are and what kind of conversations they are engaging in. Uh, so that's a very specific question. And uh, the data related to that will not be the number of retweets, etc. So it may require a specialized uh, custom implementation also, or custom dashboard also. But uh, what I meant yes. to say was, uh, Manas, you're you're yeah. absolutely right. For any business, it's important to have those questions in place first before you do anything at all. Yeah. So if you're looking at a startup, they have their own KPIs and metrics that they want to achieve month on month, quarter on quarter. Now. As social media, it's, it's you know, just looking at data, number of tweets, volume of tweets, or even velocity of tweets is irrelevant unless you know how is that going to translate to your business objectives. So, you know, the, the thing that we tell all our clients is what is the objective that you want to achieve? You know, even if you're doing a monitoring activity, what do you want to know? What is the challenge that you're facing? And then we tell them, okay, what is it that you need to know? If, if you really want to achieve these things, we'll tell you what are the metrics that you need to look at and how is that going to translate to your business objectives. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, uh, okay. So, uh, and if I, uh, if I heard you uh, correct, uh, Samrat, so you were saying that once you have decided the metrics that you are going to track and uh, you start with the implementation and you're saying that the results you will start people will start seeing in 15 days to a month uh, so one of the you know one of the question that people keep asking and there was a lot of uh, you know uh, there were a lot of questions around this on the website as well you know how the monitoring gives you a lot of data and you get, get the dashboard and you get this buzz analysis also and you've shared some examples i would say wherein this data became actionable can you share uh, before we close can you share two three more examples for the people who are hanging around here about you know how the data became actionable uh, this data became actionable because i think that's where uh, people uh, fail to connect with the data you know they don't they they, f they fail to visualize if they measure this how is what is the kind of thing that they'll do after that Uh, let me give you an example of this beauty product company we had worked with in the past. Uh, the beauty product company wanted to, was getting onto social media, not at a very evolved stage. So they said, fine, we need to just start involving uh, some of the key influences online in the beauty products, the way we start using media, which means that they carry a 
press releases, they carry uh, a product announcements, and if there is an experience session or an interaction with a the celebrity, they do it, which is fine. Uh, this was a while back. Uh, you didn't have too many people talking about it. and blogging is something which we know there are not many people do. It's more people are very active on Facebook as we know in India. Then you have some odd, uh, a large chunk of audience on Twitter. But blogging is something like I said, it requires an opinion and it requires a flow of thought. But they wanted only specifically bloggers. So and the con the idea was very clear that we need to we, we need to become more visible online. Because we are not visible online or we don't have a social media strategy and we don't have too many budgets, we need to start small. So that was actually the brief. And they said, you tell us what is that we want to do. So we clearly understood the business objective and this is the actionable item for them. For us, it translated into something very simple. Identify the individuals, identify the influencers who are talking about beauty products. But that was not all. So they came, they, they had a certain perspective. But after looking at the data, we actually also gave them a certain recommendation. We said, why don't you start helping certain of these certain individuals like these develop an online environment or an online presence, maybe a blog, you know, so, so it can be sponsored by you somewhere. But because these people are actively writing and they need some help in trying to take their presence to the next stage, you know, maybe a kind of a contribution or some kind of a technology support by you may actually help them. Now, the second part never got implemented because of budgets, but the original brief which was there that we need to start increasing our social media visibility by not going onto Facebook or by not spending too much. We were able to identify those individuals and give it to them. And actually they were able to kind of merge the media, online media with the mainstream media planning. Mm -hmm. I hope that does answer the question, Manas. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely it does. So uh, I think uh, uh, we are now uh, eight minutes extra into the session. So I would, uh, 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 you know, I think it's time to wrap up now. Uh, there were uh, quite a few questions uh, which uh, we couldn't take up. And uh, the... The thing I would uh, say to the folks out there, the webinar participants, uh, so there are, you know, some of uh, some of the questions I did not deliberately take because uh, they were more about uh, specifically about the Thoughtverse tool. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, uh, if there, there was a poll and if you guys have participated and yes, said yes in the poll, thought somebody will from Thoughtverse will get in touch with you to answer more questions. Um, but the point is, was that uh, this session was more focused around social media analytics in general, and uh, ThoughtBuzz is more like a context that we are using or an example that we are using here, because these guys have a lot of experience uh, uh, by you know being part of ThoughtBuzz. So that's why uh, you know some of those questions were not taken up. Uh, but I hope uh, there was we were able to generate a lot of clarity around uh, social media analytics uh, uh, as a domain. And uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Shamir and Samrat to take up uh, uh, this session and uh, at such a short notice. And uh, I also uh, thank you all, uh, all the participants uh, around here. And uh, we'll be uh, conducting these uh, uh, Q&A sessions uh, regularly. In fact, uh, one is already scheduled around uh, 8th of Jan. Uh, so we'll be bringing in the experts uh, from the industry and uh, we'll be picking their brains uh, as uh, in this uh, format. So if you guys have any suggestions about the way it should be structured, uh, there are any changes that you think should be made, please feel free to drop a mail uh, to manas at 42inception.com uh, or, uh, you know, just... Uh, uh, just or you can just put it in the question section on the webinar so feel free uh, to make suggestions i mean i would really like to know how uh, you guys uh, can get maximum value out of these q and a sessions so thanks everyone uh, with this i would uh, 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 like to close the session thanks samrat and Sam shamir thank you manas thanks everyone thank you everyone